Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Hi-Fi. Today we're gonna to be building an epic subwoofer for two-channel Hi-Fi. We'll be building this around the legendary Serwin Vega Stroker 15. This is a pretty big build, so let's go ahead and get right into it. This video will be too long to cover all of the details and history of this driver, so I'm going to leave a link to Spark Ed's video on this. It is pretty much the definitive history of the driver. Highly recommend you check that video out. So I've been wanting to build a furniture grade sound quality subwoofer for a while. I've known about the Stroker for most of my life as I started out in car audio. I reached out to Serwin Vega to see if they would be interested in sending me a Stroker for this build. To their credit, they sent one with no strings attached. Everything I say in this video are my own opinions and I was not paid to make this video. So thank you to Serwin Vega. It really is nice to work with a company that takes chances on drivers like this and supports the DIY community. The Stroker is not only a legend for setting SPL records, but is also widely regarded as an excellent sound quality subwoofer. That makes it perfect for a build like this. So let's take a look at the enclosure I've modeled in SketchUp. I really want to show this driver off, so I've decided to make this an upfiring design. The baffle and end panels will be double 3 quarter inch MDF. This will help to make the enclosure inert and reduce panel resonances. The bottom and sides will be single 3 quarter inch MDF and will brace them for added strength. I want to keep the design clean and simple, making it fit in anywhere it's used. To get the dimensions for the enclosure, I've used WinISD to model the driver's response. I've landed on tuning this right at 40 Hz. This gives us plenty of output down to the low 30s. This will be placed directly behind the listening position, so we don't need extreme levels of output. At 3.5 cubic feet, with this tuning, our F3 is right around 35 Hz. Serwin Vega recommends using a high pass at 30 Hz, so this works out nicely. Our cone excursion looks great, and using a high pass will stay well below Xmax. Looking at our port air velocity, we see that it peaks right below 16 meters per second at 800 watts. In most cases, it will be well below this, as it will be rare to send that much power to it. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start making some cuts.
So I'm at a point now where I need to think about bracing. My plan is to brace directly below the driver and in the cavity created by our port extension. With three of our panels being double thickness, we really don't need to go crazy here. It's also important that we don't obstruct the port opening inside the enclosure. I'm going to rip the bracing material and then give it a round over before gluing into place.
so I really wanted the finish to stand out and complement the driver. I've decided on using Jacobean gel stain and I'll top it off with a nice semi-gloss lacquer. I did consider doing a high gloss lacquer, but with a driver this flashy, I thought it might be a bit too much. A big part of Hi-Fi is enjoying how each component looks. One of the best things about DIY is we get to choose every aspect of the design and the final appearance.
So to power this driver, I'm going to be using my Crown XLS 2002. This is a pro style amplifier. It can drive very low impedance drivers like we often see in car audio. In stereo mode, it is stable down to two ohms and four ohms bridged. I'll use the bandpass setting to create a high pass at 30 hertz and a low pass around 90 hertz to start. So it's taken me a while to put this video together. As a result, I've had plenty of time to live with this and get a good understanding of how it performs in my room. I can confidently say that I'm thrilled with the result. The output is more than sufficient for two channel listening. In terms of subjective sound quality, I really couldn't be happier. This really is perfect for rock, jazz, singer songwriter, blues, and everything in between. At lower power levels, it's safe to run without the high pass and it will dig deep without it. I'm so glad I was sent this driver, and it really did live up to its hype. I can fully understand why there's a community of fans for these. The driver build quality is top notch. It may not be obvious on camera, but the driver weighs 60 pounds on its own. So that about wraps up this build. If you like speaker building, please consider subscribing. That is all we do here. Thank you to Sirwin Vega for sending this out, and I'll see you all in the next build. Bye.